tttrickle at npr.org. The forecast calling for the frigid conditions to continue with mainly fair skies the rest of the day. Temperatures topping out in the single digits below. West-northwest winds up to 10 miles an hour, making it feel like the minus 20s. And then overnight, low temperatures around 15 to 25 below. Tomorrow, a chance for a little light snow, one to two inch accumulations possible during the day on Tuesday. Support comes from Concordia College Cultural Events, presenting Bill Bowers with Beyond Words, a mind who uses narrative to create visual portraits. Tuesday, February 26th at 7.30 p.m. at Francis Fraser Comstock Theater. Tickets at ConcordiaTickets.com. Here's the scene from a ball from the Fantastic Symphony. The Symphony Fantastique from Hector oh, Berlioz. Fantastic Paul Symphony. leads the Detroit Symphony Orchestra.
something delightful and there's something slightly maniacal about the scene from of all from the fantastic symphony the symphony fantastique by hector berlioz paul perai led the detroit symphony orchestra in that performance and paul perai kind of driving the orchestra something maniacal but not in this next waltz it's all beauty and light the gold and silver waltz is by franz lehar franz boyer toiso leads the vienna folk opera orchestra
Silver Waltzes by Franz Lehár, the Vienna Folk Opera Orchestra led by Franz Boyer Teusel. Fifteen minutes past four o'clock, I'm Steve Sterak on a Monday afternoon. Boyer Teusel? Composer State Book is next. Music is supported by Haskell's, The Wine People. Locally owned, family operated, and serving our community since 1934. Featuring a varied selection of wines and spirits, ciders, and craft brews. Providing convenience, selection, service, and home delivery at 11 metro locations. This is the Composer's Date Book for February 25th. I'm John Zeck. As part of its 150th anniversary celebrations, the New York Philharmonic commissioned a number of new works. One of them premiered at New York's Avery Fisher Hall on today's date in 1993. It's dedicated to the Philharmonic and their music director then, Kurt Mazur. This was the third symphony of the American composer Ellen Tape Zwillick. It's no exaggeration to suggest that Zwillick knows the symphony orchestra from the inside out. For seven years, she was a violinist in the American Symphony Orchestra, a New York-based ensemble conducted by Leopold Stokowski when she was a player. For her third symphony, Zwillick confessed she had an often neglected section of the orchestra in mind. In an interview, she said, I'd noticed over the years the rising quality of viola playing, and I thought that the Philharmonic section was absolutely amazing. So when I had this commission, I thought almost immediately of focusing on the violas. When you think of it, many symphonies of the past are like first violin concertos with second violin and viola accompaniment. And I really wanted to put the spotlight on the viola section and give them a great deal to do, not only in terms of virtuosity, but of importance and centrality to the piece. So this symphony really grew out of my love for this section of the orchestra. Composer's date book is supported by T. Rowe Price, offering a strategic investing approach for their clients' investment and retirement goals. Institutions, advisors, employers, and individuals choose T. Rowe Price. For over 80 years, T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. Composer's date book is produced by APM, American Public Media, and the American Composers Forum. Reminding you that all music was once new. Um.
when those two sopranos start to sing in that work by contemporary composer Eric Essenfaltz, it's like that moment in uh, in The Wizard of Oz when it turns from black and white to color. O Salutaris Ostia by Eric Essenfaltz, a performance with the Scola Cantorum of Reykjavik. Music like that, you just can't turn away from when you're listening to Classical Minnesota Public Radio. I'm Steve Sterick. This is 91.1 KCCM Moorhead Fargo. Programming is supported by Wright Funeral Home, serving the Red River Valley families for over 138 years. A team of dedicated professionals committed to serving families with care and compassion. There's more information online at wrightfuneral.com. The forecast calling for the frigid conditions to continue with mainly fair skies the rest of the day. Temperatures topping out in the single digits below. West-northwest winds up to 10 miles an hour, making it feel like a minus 20s. And then overnight, low temperatures around 15 to 25 below. Tomorrow, a chance for a little light snow, one to two inch accumulations possible during the day on Tuesday. Join Allison Young weekday mornings at 10 for Morning Glories, a daily exploration of a full-length classical masterwork. Become a fan of Classical MPR on Facebook and find out what's coming up each day. 